Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for our virtual programming to celebrate the Excellence in Research Awards. I am Teresa Mayer, the Executive Vice President for Research and Partnerships and your host for today's celebration. I want to take this opportunity to send my sincere thanks to all Purdue researchers for your dedication to making an impact on the campus, community, nation, and world. Every year we host this event to bring attention to research and discovery that has had an especially significant impact and is therefore emblematic to our persistent pursuit of the next giant leap. To start, I'd like to share a short video that highlights a few of the great things Purdue researchers are doing. The video you just watched includes only a fraction of the outstanding awards received this past fiscal year. Some of the awardees featured are among the over 240 Seed for Success recipients. The Seed for Success recognition is given to investigators who have received $1 million or more in research funding during the last fiscal year. In fiscal year 2020, Purdue was awarded 79 grants for a total value of more than $231 million. As we acknowledge these milestones, we would like to call attention to this year's ACORN awardees. The first ACORN awards were bestowed in 2004 and combined with this year's awards are valued at $2.5 billion worth of sponsored funding. These bronze acorns are given only one time to first time Seed for Success award recipients. You are now in the company of the 1,349 Seed for Success acorn award winners since the award began. 
Please accept this ACORN Award as a token of sincere appreciation for your dedication to the Discovery mission at Purdue. We wish you great success in your research. Congratulations. It is now my pleasure to introduce our Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs and Diversity, Jay Ackridge. Hello everyone. It's a real pleasure for me to be part of this celebration of excellence in research. It's so important to recognize the important work you do every year, but it's especially important this year because of the added challenges that COVID-19 created for you and your research programs. We talk a lot about the unprecedented impact of this pandemic, and most often we turn to the 1918 flu pandemic to find its closest comparison. And I wondered how the flu pandemic affected our campus, so I looked it up and found some data from Purdue's annual report from 1919. The influenza pandemic had a dramatic impact back in 1918. More than 10% of Purdue students suffered seriously from influenza, and Purdue shut down for 20 days in October of that year. Now think about the scope of reopening the campus back then versus today. In 1919, there were 33 buildings on the campus. 19 were academic buildings. Today we have 385 buildings on our campus and research is conducted in more than 100 physical facilities in West Lafayette and around Indiana. The total enrollment of Purdue in 1918 was 2,605. Today, we have more than 5,000 faculty, staff, postdocs, and students in our research enterprise alone. Some of our faculty have shifted the focus of their research so they could address the coronavirus as soon as it began to appear. As Dr. Richard Kuhn said, we've had an outpouring of researchers who are doing what they can do to address this global problem. While I don't think we'll ever fully, truly know the collective impact COVID-19 has had on your research programs, what we do know is that your research has continued, thanks to you and the Return to Research program developed by Executive Vice President Teresa Mayer and her team. And that, frankly, is a remarkable achievement. It was a great privilege for me to recognize many of you at the Virtual Faculty Awards Convocation earlier this fall. And it's my honor to recognize again the two exceptional faculty who won this year's Moral Awards. The award was established in 2012 by the Provost Office to commemorate the signing of the Moral Act by President Lincoln in 1862, the legislation that laid the groundwork for land-grant universities like Purdue. The Moral Award honors faculty whose careers have exemplified excellence in teaching, research, and engagement. And I'm very pleased to recognize this year's Purdue Moral Award recipients. First is Suprio Dada, the Thomas Duncan Distinguished Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Dr. Dada is known for pioneering an approach to quantum transport which has been widely adopted in the field of nanoelectronics. He is credited for innovative theoretical proposals that have inspired new fields of research, including molecular thermoelectricity, negative capacitance devices, and spintronics. Dr. Dada engages students, engineers, and scientists not only through the classrooms at Purdue, but also around the world through his skilled use of online platforms. He has earned several Purdue and National Teaching Awards for undergraduate and graduate teaching excellence, and he's been inducted into Purdue's Book of Great Teachers. Our congratulations to Dr. Dada. The second Moral Award winner is Professor Ken Ferraro, Distinguished Professor of Sociology. Dr. Ferraro is the founding director of the Center on Aging and the Life Course. He is known for his life course studies of health inequality, especially racial disparities and the early origins of adult health. His undergraduate courses on aging integrate service learning so that students interact face-to-face -face with seniors in the community. Dr. Ferraro led Purdue's initiative to join the Age-Friendly University Global Network to support meaningful roles for older adults on our campus. Purdue was the first university in the Big Ten and in Indiana to join this global network. Thank you, Dr. Ferraro, for your outstanding work and congratulations on your Moral Award. Next, I'd like to introduce our Sigma Xi Faculty Award recipients. Sigma Xi is the International Honor Society of Science and Engineering, 
One of the oldest and largest scientific organizations in the world, Sigma Xi has a distinguished history of service to science and society for more than 125 years. The Sigma Xi Faculty Research Award goes to Fabio Ribeiro, the R. Norris and Eleanor Shreve Professor of Chemical Engineering. Dr. Ribeiro's research interests are centered on the kinetics of heterogeneous catalytic reactions and catalyst characterization under reaction conditions. And the Mid-Career Faculty Research Award goes to Arju Artakani, Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering. Dr. Artakani's research focuses on the motion of particles and microorganisms in complex fluids and flow through porous media. Congratulations to both of our Sigma Xi awardees. Finally, as you know, Purdue's colleges and schools present research awards throughout the year. These awards acknowledge faculty whose research has contributed to the advancement of their disciplines. You can see by the number of names on the screen that we have many outstanding faculty doing important research throughout our academic units. And we thank each of you for your excellent work. Before I close, I'd like to add my congratulations to all of Purdue awardees this year. It's a great privilege to serve as your provost. I'm honored to be working along such brilliant and innovative scientists and scholars. I want to thank you once again for your commitment and determination, even under these most difficult circumstances. I'm deeply grateful for your efforts. And now it's my pleasure to turn the podium over to President Daniels. My deepest congratulations on your accomplishments and hail Purdue. Greetings everyone. On the one hand, it's a shame that I have to speak to you this evening remotely or virtually in the way we've all become accustomed to in this uh, unique year of 2020. I would much rather do this as we always have in person. The excellence in research uh, evening is one of the highlights of the Purdue uh, calendar. Uh, there is one redeeming offset uh, to this uh, necessity, and that is that I will get this year to uh, uh, listen to all the lectures. Uh, frequently in the past, I have not been able to catch one or more, but uh, on the day uh, well ahead of the evening, by the way, on which this is being recorded. Uh, I'll be able to uh, watch Jason's lecture. I read his uh, book, Unnaturally Delicious, uh, a year or two ago, and uh, uh, we're very proud of his work. And likewise, Kaushik and Chris, to you, uh, congratulations. Thank you for the renown, the attention that you brought Purdue, and the way you've advanced uh, the world's state of knowledge in your uh, very, very important areas. This last uh, uh, year has brought, yet again, uh, records achieved by our faculty uh, in research across the board. We passed the half a billion dollar mark in research awards for the first time. And uh, incidentally, uh, both uh, patents and startups also hit all-time highs. And our, our researchers uh, achieved something else that uh, uh, really was a national uh, leadership accomplishment, and that is that uh, you found a way back to your work, back to your labs on July 1 uh, in numbers that, as far as we know, were not matched by any other research one university in the country. So uh, not only to have uh, achieved great breakthroughs like those we're honoring tonight, uh, not only to have uh, achieved new collective totals that uh, continue to produce advance as a world research leader, but to have uh, uh, soldiered through the difficulties that the pandemic has brought and got back to the vital business of advancing uh, a knowledge uh, through uh, world-class uh, research uh, for all these things, we thank every faculty member and, and most especially those we're honoring tonight. And now, I'll turn it over to Teresa. Thank you, President Daniels. Today, we recognize three faculty members with Purdue University's most prestigious research awards. These awards represent broad areas of research and scholarly strength at Purdue University. Faculty members are invited to submit nominations for colleagues whose research contributions have significant impact on the world around us. The recipients are selected by faculty representatives and approved by the Executive Vice President for Research and Partnerships 
and the Office of the President. The university has established a permanent plaque in the Purdue Memorial Union to commemorate all former awardees for their outstanding research and scholarship in the natural sciences, in the areas of pure and applied science and engineering, and in the humanities and social sciences. The plaque is located at the northwest entrance to the Purdue Memorial Union across from the Book of Great Teachers plaque. And now it is my pleasure to begin the presentation of this year's Distinguished Research Awards. Our first award is the Luanne Aday Award, established in 2017 by Purdue alumna Luanne Aday. The Lorne D. Bain Distinguished Professor Emerita in Public Health and Medicine at the University of Texas School of Public Health in Houston. This annual award recognizes a Purdue University faculty member who has made a major impact in the humanities or social sciences. I would like to introduce Joan Fulton, Professor and Associate Head of the Department of Agricultural Economics to introduce our 2020 Luana Day Award recipient. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Jason Lusk, who is Distinguished Professor and Department Head of Agricultural Economics and this year's recipient of the Luann Aday Award. Kate Murphy from the New York Times sums it up perfectly. Jason Lusk is a food and agricultural economist who studies what we eat and why we eat it. This topic is critically important in today's world because food is no longer just food. At this time, consumers are responding to different food characteristics. Thus, it is critical that we understand consumers' responses so we can respond with appropriate decisions for an efficient food system and distribution system. Jason Lusk is doing just that. His research encompasses five areas. First, he is a leader in developing new innovative research methods in behavioral economics. Secondly, he applies these new innovative research methods to analyze, understand, and predict consumer behavior. Third, he applies these results in multifaceted policy analysis related to food, nutrition, health, and consumer satisfaction. Fourth, as a forward-looking academic, Jason Lusk is looking at consumer trends, identifying emerging food issues, and performing economic analysis of these issues. Finally, as Jason himself notes, he has lived significant time in Texas, Kansas, and Oklahoma, so livestock and meat marketing technology issues are important for him. Recently, in response to food shortages caused by COVID-19, he was interviewed by Bloomberg, Reuters, Financial Times, CNN, and LA Times. Lusk has received numerous awards and recognition. One that I will highlight provides evidence of the impact of Lusk's broad-ranging communications. In the fall of 2017, Lusk was awarded the Borlaug CAST Communication Award, which stands for Council for Agriculture Science and Technology. This award, named for Norman Borlaug, Nobel Prize winner and father of the Green Revolution, is a pinnacle award for food and agriculture. It is an honor and pleasure to introduce Dr. Jason Lusk, this year's recipient of the Luann Aday Award. Our next award is the Arden L. Bement Jr. Award. The Arden L. Bement Jr. Award was established in 2015 by distinguished professor emeritus Arden Bement and his wife, Louise. The annual award recognizes a Purdue faculty member for recent outstanding accomplishments in the pure and applied sciences and engineering. I would like to introduce Anand Raghunathan, the Silicon Valley Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering, to introduce our 2020 Arden L. Bement Jr. recipient. It is my great pleasure to introduce my colleague, Kaushik Roy, who is the recipient of the 2020 Arden L. Bement Jr. Award. Kaushik joined Purdue in 1993 after receiving an undergraduate degree from the Indian Institute of Technology at Kharagpur and a PhD from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. His career at Purdue has been exceptionally productive and it's not an exaggeration to say that Kaushik's name has become synonymous with integrated circuits research at Purdue. If you're at a conference in our field and talk about integrated circuits and Purdue, the first name that would come up probably would be Kaushik's. Kaushik presently serves as the director for the Center for Brain-Inspired Computing, a multi-university center funded by the Semiconductor Research Corporation and DARPA with 10 universities, 18 faculty members, and over 150 graduate students and postdocs. He has received many awards for his research, too many to enumerate, but notably they include the Vannevar Bush Fellowship from the U.S. Department of Defense, 
the Technical Excellence Award and the Aristotle Award from the Semiconductor Research Corporation, the Charles Desor Technical Achievement Award from the IEEE Circuits and Systems Society, and the Humboldt Award. Kaushik has a long and distinguished record of fundamental contributions to the field of electronics. He is specifically being recognized with the Bement Award for his work in the area of brain-inspired computing. As we move into the era of artificial intelligence, with computers surpassing human capabilities in a variety of tasks, the gap between natural and artificial intelligence in terms of energy efficiency has still never been greater. Kaushik's work on brain-inspired computing spanning neuro-inspired learning algorithms, neuromorphic hardware, and neuromimetic devices is paving the way for a new generation of electronic computing systems that are radically more energy efficient and will enable future advances in the field of AI. My own association with Kaushik goes back to well before I came to Purdue. I was fortunate to have an opportunity to present a tutorial with Kaushik quite early in my own career and remember being struck by how easy going he was and how easy he was to interact and work with. That impression turned out to be true once I came here. And I can say that working with him has not only been incredibly productive, but also highly enjoyable. While there are many more things I could say about Kaushik and his contributions, three things in my mind set him apart as a leader in his field. First, his ability to foresee challenges and trends well before the rest of the community. Second, his broad yet deep understanding of the principles of integrated circuits and computing systems across different levels of abstraction. And last but not the least, the amazing impact he has had on the community, both through his own research and also through the large group of students he has trained, 85 and counting, many of whom are already leaders in academia and industry in their own right. Our final award this evening is the Herbert Newby McCoy Award. The Herbert Newby McCoy Award was established in 1964 by Ethel Terry McCoy in honor of her husband, a distinguished Purdue University alumnus. The annual award recognizes a Purdue faculty member who has made the greatest contribution of the year to the natural sciences. I would like to introduce John Finley, professor and head of physics and astronomy, to introduce our 2020 Herbert Newby McCoy recipient. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce the 2020 Herbert Newby McCoy Award winner, Chris Green, the Albert Overhauser Distinguished Professor of Physics and Astronomy. Chris received his BS degree from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln in 1976, and I think it is fair to say remains a proud corn husker to this day. Both his MS and PhD were from the University of Chicago, his PhD awarded in 1980 under the direction of Ugo Fano. Chris did a short postdoctoral term at Stanford University under Richard Zare before taking his first faculty position at Louisiana State University in 1981. Chris, in seven years, rose to the rank of professor of physics at LSU prior to transitioning to the University of Colorado at Boulder in 1989, where he was a professor of physics and a fellow of JILA. In his last year at University of Colorado, 2011-2012, he was the Arts and Sciences Professor of Distinction. In 2012, we were fortunate enough at Purdue to attract Chris to the Department of Physics and Astronomy, where he is the Albert Overhauser Distinguished Professor of Physics and Astronomy. Along the way in his academic career, Chris has garnered multiple awards and recognitions. He was a Sloan Foundation Fellow in 1984, won a Presidential Young Investigator Award in 1985, and was elected a Fellow of the American Physical Society in 1990. In 1991, Chris was the inaugural recipient of the I.I. Robbie Prize of the American Physical Society and was the recipient of the Alexander von Humboldt Research Award for Senior U.S. Scientists in 2007. In 2010, he was the winner of the Davison Germer Prize of the American Physical Society cited for his seminal contributions to theoretical atomic, molecular, and optical physics. Chris's reputation is truly international, and he was the winner of a Hamburg Prize for Theoretical Physics in 2013. In 2019, Chris was deservedly elected to the U.S. National Academy of Sciences. His reputation and stature in his field are borne out by some of the comments of his anonymous evaluators, eminent scientists in their own right. For example, 
quote, Chris Green is, in my opinion, the outstanding atomic theoretical physicist in the world, unquote. And, quote, I see Chris among the very few and exceptional AMO theorists who are able to connect hardcore atomic physics and structure calculations with today's quantum science with atoms and molecules, unquote. All of his evaluators recognize Chris's insight into theoretical physics, and in regards to his work on few body physics, it is stated that, quote, concepts and methods that have come out of this work is still animating much current research, unquote. Perhaps Chris's work is best capsulized in this statement, quote, Chris Green's work has been and is highly significant and influential in advanced research in contemporary physics, unquote. Chris is an outstanding scientist, as evidenced by the list of awards and honors just presented and the comments of other eminent scientists. But what is not obvious is that Chris is also an outstanding citizen of the Department of Physics and Astronomy, an outstanding mentor to his junior faculty, his more than two dozen PhD students, and his more than two dozen postdoctoral research associates. Chris will tell us today about the strange nature of the quantum world. Please welcome the Albert Overhauser Distinguished Professor of Physics and Astronomy and 2020 recipient of the Herbert Newby McCoy Award, Chris Green. This concludes the 2020 Excellence in Research Awards. Once again, thank you for your continued work to ensure Purdue is always striving to keep our university at the forefront of innovative thought that benefits our society and helps us grow our next giant leap in research together. I hope to see you in person for our 2021 recognition. Boiler up and hail Purdue.